obeying the Holy Ghost. The word obey means to follow the commands or guidance yes. of. So when someone is said to obey, it means to follow the guidance or the commands of whoever you obey. But the important question is, we only obey in whom we have confidence in. Everybody understand that? We only obey in whom we have confidence in. Yes. If we don't have confidence in the Holy Spirit, we will not obey the Holy Spirit. And that's the problem we face in the church of the living God today. We don't depend on Him. And the reason why we don't depend on the Holy Spirit is because of the fact that we don't have confidence yes. that He will do what He said He will do. And that is why the church as a whole, we struggle in the body of Christ because of the fact that we don't obey him. Jesus said, let us go to John 14 verse 16. John 14, 16. And Jesus said, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Now, the word helper, the Holy Spirit, when we look at the Holy Spirit, we see the Holy Spirit as the helper. Yeah. And in Greek, the word helper means parakletos. So if you want, you can take it down. It's parakletos, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S. The Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is our helper. Yeah. He's a parakletos, which in the Greek means helper which means to come alongside to assist so the purpose of the holy spirit is to come alongside our believers mm -hmm. and help us or assist us mm -hmm. in the work of god amen you everybody understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. but unfortunately we go back to it. why there's a struggle in the church today because of the fact one basic thing we don't depend on the holy spirit anymore most of the times we depend on programs mm. we have an agenda we set a program and we go by the program which we would like to accomplish but the holy spirit is there to assist us and unfortunately we don't call upon him and that is why there are so many people in the church of the living god that are oppressed that are depressed that are bound because we don't depend on him anymore Look, look for example, look at Peter in the book of Acts. Everybody believed Peter was unlearned. Most of the theologians believe Peter was unlearned in the fact that he didn't go to theological school. He was unlearned. But yet Peter de depended on the Holy Spirit. And in one sermon, Peter led 3,000 people to Christ. Amen. Because he depended on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there as our guide. The Holy Spirit there is our counselor, our advocate. So we ought to depend on the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example. Anybody that ministers in the Word of God and don't depend on the Holy Spirit, it becomes an annoyance. There's a difference between an anointing and an annoyance. Most of the time, we annoy people in the body of Christ and not the anointing flow because if we take the, the Holy Spirit out of the equation then we speak in flesh yes. we speak in mere words mm. and how can you deliver someone with just mere words mm. it must be moved by the Holy Spirit and, and, and that's the problem we face and I see it all the time sister Lily you go to ministries and there's a struggle Anytime there's a struggle to do anything in the Spirit of God, it means that you're operating in flesh. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is the oil. It represents the oil. And if you don't have oil in your engine, what happens to your engine? Freeze Come on, up. people of God, let's talk. What happens to your engine? It'll freeze up. It ceases on you. Isn't it? What the Holy Spirit does as representative of the oil, it gives the lubrication. So it makes it easier to flow. Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. When we look at the, in, in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 1 26, God said, let us make man, us 
That us represents Elohim, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Some people believe the Holy Spirit is distinct. The Holy Spirit is equal to God the Father and God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit is with us right now. Everybody understand that? So it's important people of God, as children of God, we move by the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, what would you have me do? How would you have me share this word? What direction are you taking me in? Because he's the spirit of truth. There's no lie in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit don't force you to do anything. He's a gentleman. He comes alongside to do what? To assist you. Mm -hmm. He assists you. Don't take a leading rule unless you say, Holy Spirit, you go before me and you do what you require. So when every minister, let me give you this clear. Every minister, when they bring in forth a word, pastors, leaders, whatever there may be, ministers, always ask the Holy Spirit, what would you have me share? Because the Holy Spirit knows the needs of everybody in your church. Amen. You may not know the needs of people, but the Holy Spirit knows. And that is why when you bring forth a word, be guided by the Holy Spirit, you always hear someone say, that word was for me. I was battling with this, and you brought a word to set me free. It's because of the fact you depend on the Holy Spirit. He's your guide, people of God. Why don't we depend on him? Why don't we ask him to come in and assist us in our walk? Because we cannot live this life on our own. The next thing we have to understand, when God said to do something, he means to do it now, when he said do it now. So delayed obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. If God said to do something, he meant to do the whole thing. He don't mean to do a piece of it and do the other part later. He said, do this for me. He requires of you to do it. So we must be sensitive, people of God, to the Spirit of God. When God said to do something, we go. Because he ultimately is the engine to our walk. If you don't have the Holy Spirit active in your life, you will live a very frustrated life. Mm -hmm. You will live a very boring life. Mm -hmm. And you will frustrate others in the process. So instead of winning people to Christ, you're running people away, you're pushing people away from Christ. Because you're not allowing the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to manifest His anointing and His power inside of you. So each and every one of us as ministers, we ought to ask the Holy Spirit, Fill me again. Amen. Fill me. Renew a right spirit in me. Because you see something, people of God, if you don't depend on the Holy Spirit, you will be you, you will dry up. Your spirit will dry up. Because the cares of this world will come in and stifle your walk. That is why we need to renew our spirit on a continuous basis. And how do we renew our spirit? We renew our spirit in prayer. We renew our spirit by reading the word of God constantly. That is why God, Joshua said in, in, in Joshua 1, it meditate on the word day in and day out, night and day meditate. So you're supposed to, and the word meditate means to mutter to yourself. So you speak back to yourself. You're not crazy when you're speaking back to yourself. A child of God, when he, like, let's say for example, you're walking down the street, he said, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I am, the, I am hidden in, in, in God, in Christ Jesus. I am, and you keep going. You're not crazy. You're speaking to yourself. You're speaking to your spirit man. And you're right. building your spirit man in the process. People who are oppressed or people who are de demon possessed, they speak in what Satan have them speak mm -hmm. and make them more stressed out and frustrated. Mm -hmm. But we as children of God, we could speak the word of God and the word of God is able to set us free. Mm -hmm. So that is why we supposed to, each believer, it's vital to your walk. 
obey the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit will always guide you into all truth. And he will bring back into remembrance what God has placed inside of you and what you have studied over the years. So sometimes you might be ministering to someone and all of a sudden a word come out from your mouth. Yes. And you say, wow, I didn't remember that. But the Holy Spirit remembered so you can bring it out that it will be applicable to people in the right time. Among people of God. Yeah. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever. Yes. When you hear people shooting them, shooting one another and doing all kind of foolishness, mm -hmm. we need the Holy Spirit more than ever. So that we can give people a wooden season to set them free. People are dying out there, people of God. Mm -hmm. And the church is playing the fool really. The church gets so comfortable. A guy wrote a book said he called the church the play church. Because the church is playing. Not all of us play, but a large portion of us, we are playing. As I said last week, the word that came forth, Bill Bright. Pastor Bill Bright said less than 2% of all Christians share the word. Less than 2% people have gone. So what the 98% of us are doing? I know none of, all, none of you all here belong to the 98%. That's why people on YouTube and outside. But we got to stir up. This Jesus inside of us, people of God. We too, we, 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 we too sulk, we, we sulk too much. People must see us and have something. We should supposed to radiate off of people because we have something to say. We have a word to give someone in season. I mean, when you look at it, you see some people on their jobs and they never minister to anybody. How could you be on a job and never minister to someone? sad people of God a light cannot hide a light have to be shown a light have to be radiant how could we hide we gonna rock and hide because we don't want people to know we are Christians come on people of God if somebody was responsible for your salvation yes. somebody ministered to someone of us in here Hallelujah. none of us didn't get up one day and say I want Jesus Amen. come on let's be realistic any one of us, any one of you all get up one morning and say, I want Jesus. And even if you say you want Jesus one day, somebody sowed the seed many years before. That's right. Mm -hmm. So somebody minister to some one of you yeah. and all of us in here. Yeah. So come on people, if, if, if someone took the time to share the word of God with us, why should we keep it from someone? Yeah. Why are we doing that? We, we need to step up, people of God. As Dr. Lee said earlier on, the blood is so on your hands because we prevent from body coming to Christ. Amen. Because of our lifestyle, because we don't want to share the word of God, and the Holy Spirit is probing you. Speak to them, speak to them. And we say, no, we don't have a word in season for them. Or we are afraid of what they may say. Come on, people of God. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a liar. Yes, come on now. We need to step up. Yes. We need to spend time so that God can speak to us. So when we speak, we speak as of the oracle of God. Amen. And not speak just to appease people and because they have itching ears. We, sh we should stop these things, people of God. Amen. Speak what God said to speak. Mm -hmm. If God said it, speak it. Only then you find comfort and joy in the things of God. Everybody understand that? Any questions, anyone? Anybody? Yeah. Um, um, Mike. Um, let, me skip, let me get a mic for her. Someone can assist me, please, with it. Mike. Praise and glory to God. Yeah, but um, there was a question regarding um, the Holy Spirit, and you said that um, ministers will speak only what the Holy Spirit is saying. And you, I'm sure we've been in uh, services where ministers have just said something, and it was not, it's like telling a story or a parable or, you know, bringing it current. Is that the Holy Spirit leading, say, that kind of stuff? 
You see me, I, I'm not one person to say this is not the Lord, but your spirit will be a witness. Mm -hmm. If you're a child of God, your spirit will be a witness in what someone say. Mm -hmm. Some people use spiritual witchcraft in the church mm -hmm. to destroy people. Give them a word because they want them to believe that this word will come for them. And which is sometimes crap. Right, let me give you an example. I remember a young man when I was writing my last book before that. You know what? This young lady said, the Holy Spirit tell him, you will be my wife. Wow. Hmm. This is a praying man. And she came to him and said, the Holy Spirit told her. So you see how we manipulate the Spirit of God? And that's happened a lot in the church. We manipulate, we operate in a spirit of witchcraft and manipulation in the church of the living God. She came to him and said, God said, this, this is what, this, this will crack. God said, you have to be my wife. Mm -hmm. And this guy consecrated his life 100% to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He had no desire to get married. Marriage is not part of him. And she said that God said. So we deceive people in the body of Christ with the spirit of manipulation. So we got to be aware of that in these last days. I just remember what my original question was. Um, you know, I, I go to services and there's um, prophetic words being given. And how, how you know, I've, even, I've heard one prophet say one thing to one person and then maybe in a different service another prophet comes along and says like totally opposite to that same person well, so how do we know when it's a prophetic word that it's really coming from God all right let me simplify it here for you all tonight a prophetic word is always to confirm what God said to you Amen. that's it how could God bring a prophetic word for me and I am in a relationship with God, and he didn't say it to me. That's, that's a God of confusion. Yeah. And the Bible teaches that God is not a God of confusion. Yeah. How could God tell Lily, Pastor Lily, something about my life when I'm in a relationship with God, and he never told me? <laughs> that's good. You know what I'll do? That, that, that causes friction. Right. Because then they will say, how could God? And then Lily, Pastor Lily now will start operating in the spirit of witchcraft. Exactly. And start manipulating God's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And these things happen often in the church of the living God. Amen. I am telling you, I see it many times. One of the most destructive gifts if used improperly is the gift of prophecy in the body of Christ. Yeah. I see people walk out of church and never return yeah. because we give them yes. a lying word. Yes. Yes. We gotta be you see, that is why you need to depend on depend on the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whatever somebody spoke to me, my spirit must be a witness, or I reject it in Jesus' name. Amen. You got to, we, we got to be mature believers in these last days. People will come and say, I am Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people run away with that. That's how cult starts. Yes. People believing in the created thing rather than the creator. Romans speak about it. We're supposed to put more emphasis in the creator as opposed to the creator. The created thing. The Bible says, curse is man that put their trust in man. Oh, curse. And when God said curse, trust me people, oh God, it's curse. Mm -hmm. So we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful in these last days. Be careful of what people speak into your life. Mm -hmm. Be very careful. If you're not sure, say, Lord, give me understanding. Yeah. If you're not sure. And, and this is for pastors, mm -hmm. preachers, ministers any but anybody because you can bring a lion wood to appease people that happens all the time people bring lion wood and say god say you'll be rich you'll be making you'll get a million dollars at the end of this month huh. god never spoke that to you and you gone on your high horse believing i'll be a millionaire in a month 
and destroy you. You gotta be wise. The Bible said to be wise as a serpent and what? Harmless as a dove. We gotta spend time with God more than ever in these last days. I teach my children, spend time with God so that when people speak a word, you can re accept it or reject it. Amen. And when you rejected it, reject it in Jesus' name. Yes. Don't give it no power. Reject it all hand. I reject that in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind yes. so it don't affect me. We can, <laughs> this is a topic we can go for days. <laughs> on obeying the Holy Spirit. But I just want to share one thing with you all and I close. Spend time with Him. So lying lips don't come and speak a word in your life. Amen. May God bless you all. May God cause His light to shine upon you and give you great success in Jesus' name. Amen.